Hear now from Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. The word of God for us, the people of God. You may, you may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. <clears throat> Amen. So as Christine pointed out and is on the front of your bulletin, today is Transfiguration Sunday. <clears throat> and I just read Matthew's account of this important event. But before I talk about the Transfiguration, I want to put it into context. In the previous chapter of this gospel, Jesus asked his disciples, his closest friends, who do you say I am? And Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. After Peter's identification of him in this way, Jesus then explained to the disciples that he's going to be going to Jerusalem, be arrested, killed, and then raised on the third day. Now, Peter, as you may remember, doesn't want this to happen, but, Peter, but Jesus rebuked Peter because Jesus is determined to go to Jerusalem and continue to teach people about the ways of God. Jesus then taught his disciples about living a sacrificial life in which you care about and love others. He wants them to understand the model of selfless leadership that he's been showing them for three years. It seems that Jesus is trying to get the disciples on the same page with him and prepare them for what will happen. But they have a limited perspective and don't really understand what's going on. You see, it had to be very, very hard for the disciples to truly recognize Jesus as God's son the Messiah, the Christ, because they really knew him. They had been with him day in and day out for three years. They saw the real human Jesus all the time. Yes, they had firsthand knowledge of how he could do miraculous things, but in reality, that didn't make him any different from other Hebrew prophets who had preceded him. The disciples knew their Jewish history. They knew that Moses, because he was following where God led, was able to part the Red Sea and bring water from a rock in the middle of the desert. They knew that by being in step with God, Elijah called down a three-year drought on Israel and then raised the from the dead, the son of the widow of Zarephath. So the people, even his closest friends, that thought Jesus was a prophet weren't crazy and they weren't ignoring what they had seen. They were just having a hard time realizing the full extent of who Jesus was, that he was not only human but also divine. I think Jesus wanted his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, to have proof about his true identity. 
By taking them up on the mountain with him, he was preparing them for the future. He wanted these three, the leaders of his disciples, to have an encounter with God that further established Jesus' identity so that they could lead the others after Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Now, the Transfiguration is a unique event in Jesus' life and ministry, and it is significant because it confirms Jesus' true identity to Peter, James, and John in three different ways. First, when we, he is on the top of that mountain, Jesus undergoes a change. Our Bible says that Jesus was transfigured, but the Greek word for that is metamorphosed, which means he underwent a visible change. So something big was happening. We read just a minute ago that his face and his clothes glowed. Jesus glowed with a divine light. Second, after he was infused with this divine light, Moses and Elijah, long dead prophets, appear and talk to him. They were considered the greatest prophets from Israel's history. So their appearance alongside Jesus demonstrates that he is the fulfillment of God's promises made in the Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament. Their being with Jesus also might give the disciples the ability to understand what Jesus had predicted about his future, because both Moses and Elijah were called by God to do important things. However, their actions caused them to be initially rejected by the people that they led. But later, they were vindicated by God. Third, not only is Jesus infused with divine light and able to have a chat with Moses and Elijah, but God also speaks to them from out of a cloud. God says, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. Those words are identical to the words that God spoke when Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. The only difference is that God adds a phrase at the end, listen to him. Right? Now listen there doesn't mean just to hear, it means to pay attention, to heed what it is that Jesus says. Now this heavenly proclamation is further confirmation to the disciples that Jesus is who Peter said he was. He is the Son of God, which means that God is and has been with them, which is mind-blowing. This confirmation of Jesus' identity is hugely important. Now, think about you. I know with me, when I'm told something, or even when I discover it for myself, I sometimes need confirmation about that what I have heard is true. And the bigger and harder the truth is to believe, the more I really need confirmation. So this confirmation that Peter, James, and John have received will give them the conviction and courage, endurance, and perseverance they will need to pass on Jesus' teachings after he's no longer physically present with them. I think Jesus knew that the disciples needed this type of confirmation to help them navigate the future without him being right there with them. And so he made sure that they had what they would need to face the struggles ahead. But I think it's possible that Jesus needed the transfiguration for himself also. Maybe he needed reassurance that he was, in fact, doing what God wanted him to, that he was on the right path. 
We all like to get confirmation from our parents, don't we? That they are proud of us. It can give us a boost and give us the strength we need to get through difficult times. Now, God knew what was in store for Jesus. So I think God gave Jesus the assurance he needed in order to strengthen him for what was coming. I think we all understand this. I know personally, both of my parents have been dead for over a decade. Uh, they died before I went into the ministry, before I even thought about it. And so I have never been able to get that assurance that what I'm doing is something they would be proud of. Now, I think I know that, but I still have never been able to hear them say it. But as God would have it, a couple of years ago, I was having lunch with a good friend of mom and daddy's who had known them well. And unbidden, in the middle of lunch, she just looked at me and said, Austin, you know your parents would be so proud of you. And that statement meant the world to me. Because even though it was not uttered by my parents, that Marcia said it to me made it seem like it had come from them. And it has given me assurance on days that might not be the easiest to keep going and know that I'm on that right path. So I wonder if Jesus, as he prepared for what he knew was to come, maybe needed to hear from his parent, you're doing a great job, keep going. That kind of affirmation from God would give Jesus the resolve to continue on the path to Jerusalem and bear the pain and the heartache that he knew was to come. Thus, I believe the transfiguration was intended to be an event that both confirmed Jesus's identity for the disciples, but also assured Jesus that he was doing what God wanted him to. Consequently, the transformation is a huge event for Jesus and the disciples, and we are all disciples. The thing is, even though it was a historical event, it's still important for us today because it shows how much God cares about us. God cares enough to become one of us and live an earthly life with all the stuff that comes with it, just like we do. God also prepares us for the future just like God knew what lay ahead for the disciples and equipped James, Peter, and John with knowledge that would enable them to navigate the future without Jesus being physically present, God gives us what we need to navigate our futures. Confirmation of his identity provided the zeal that the disciples needed as they shared the good news of Jesus Christ after his ascension. And in the same way, God cares about us. If we're attuned to the Lord, we will receive confirmation, assurance, and preparation from God that all the things that we need to do whatever it is that God has called us to do. In addition, we, like the disciples, can be strengthened by understanding Jesus' divinity and believing that he rose from the dead. Jesus' resurrection shows us that death does not have the last word. His resurrection demonstrates that there's more to life than what we see here on this earth. There's something glorious waiting for us after this is all over. And this knowledge can embolden us to follow the way of Jesus and be willing to risk our comfort for the sake of others, just like Jesus and his disciples did. Finally, God continues to appear to us, albeit in subtle ways, in order to give us the ability to withstand the chaos and the problems that we encounter. I doubt we will hear the voice of God on a mountaintop, but we have the Holy Spirit living within us. Knowing that God is with us equips us with the courage, 
perseverance, and peace that we need to endure whatever it is that life throws at us, throws at us because we know that God is with us in it. Thanks be to God.